Once upon a time, oh, many, many years ago, as time is calculated by men, there was in paradise a most miserable, thoroughly unhappy, and utterly dejected cherub, who was known throughout heaven as the littlest angel. He was exactly four years, six months, five days, seven hours, and 42 minutes of age when he presented himself to the venerable gatekeeper for admittance to the glorious kingdom of God. Standing defiantly with his short brown legs wide apart, the littlest angel tried to pretend that he wasn't at all afraid. But his lower lip trembled, and a tear disgraced him by rolling down to the very tip of his small, freckled nose. But that wasn't all. While the kindly gatekeeper was entering the name in his great book, the littlest angel, having left home as usual without a handkerchief, endeavored to hide the telltale evidence by snuffing, which so unnerved the good gatekeeper that he did something he had never done before in all eternity. He blotted the page. From that moment on, the littlest angel became the despair of all the heavenly hosts. Whenever the heavenly choir held singing practice, he inevitably spoiled its ethereal effect by singing off-key. And at nightly prayers, the littlest angel always arrived late, knocking everyone's wings askew as he darted into his place. Besides, the general appearance of the littlest angel was even worse than his deportment. It was whispered among the seraphim and cherubim that he didn't even look like an angel. And they were quite correct. He didn't. For one thing, he was always running, holding on to his halo with one hot, chubby little hand, which made his halo permanently tarnished. Furthermore, even when he stood very still, it never behaved as a halo should. It was always slipping down over his right eye or over his left eye. Yes, and it must be here recorded that his wings were neither useful nor ornamental. Everyone in paradise held his breath when the littlest angel perched himself like an unhappy fledgling sparrow and prepared to take off. He would teeter this way and that way, and then finally he would shut his eyes, hold his freckled nose, and hurl himself slowly into space. However, owing to the regrettable fact that he always forgot to move his wings, the littlest angel always fell head over halo. Now, anyone can easily understand why the littlest angel would have to be disciplined. And so, on an eternal day in the year eternal, he was directed by a cherub to present his small self before an angel of the peace. And then, with a heavy heart, he trudged his way to the place of judgment. As he slowly approached the great doorway, he was surprised to hear a merry voice singing. upon his almost clean robe and then tiptoed in. The singer, who is known as the understanding angel, looked down at the small culprit and the littlest angel instantly tried to make himself invisible, very much like a snapping turtle. At that, the singer laughed and said, Oh, so you're the one who's been making heaven so unheavenly. Come here, cherub and tell me all about it. The littlest angel ventured a furtive look. First one eye, and then the other eye. Suddenly, almost before he knew it, 
He was explaining how very difficult it was for a boy who suddenly finds himself transformed into an angel. Yes, said the understanding angel. But what was this talk about swinging on the golden gates? Well, he had, he recalled, swung once. Well, twice. swung three times on the golden gates. But that was just for something to do. That was the whole trouble. There wasn't anything for a small angel to do. And he was very homesick. Oh, not that paradise wasn't beautiful, but the earth was beautiful too. Wasn't it created by God himself? Why, said the littlest angel, there were trees to climb and brooks to fish and caves to play at pirate chief, and the swimming hole, and sun, and rain, and dark, and dawn, and the thick brown dust so soft and warm beneath your feet. The understanding angel smiled, an understanding smile. Then he asked the littlest angel, what would make him most happy in paradise? The cherub thought for a moment and whispered in his ear, There's a box. I left it under my bed back home. If only I could have that. You shall have it, he promised. And at once, he dispatched fleet-winged heavenly messengers to bring the box from Earth to paradise. And then, in all those timeless days that followed, everyone wondered at the great change in the littlest angel. Among all the cherubs in God's kingdom, he was the most happy. His conduct was above the slightest reproach. His halo was always on straight. His robe was clean. And on excursions to Elysian fields, it could be said, and truly said, that he flew like an angel. Then it came to pass that glorious tidings spread through paradise. Jesus, the Son of God, was to be born of Mary in Bethlehem. The angels rejoiced, and their voices were lifted to herald the coming of the Christ child. The angels and archangels, the seraphim and cherubim, the gatekeeper, the wingmaker, yes, and even the halo smith, put aside their usual task to prepare their gift for the blessed infant. All of the littlest angel. He sat himself down on the topmost step of the golden stairs and meditated. What kind of gift could he offer to the child of God? First, he dreamed of composing a lyric hymn of adoration. But the littlest angel was woefully wanting in musical talent. Then he thought of writing a prayer. But the littlest angel was lamentably lacking in literate skill. What, oh, what could a small angel give that would please the holy infant? And then suddenly, the littlest angel had an idea. A wonderful idea for a gift. And so, on that day of days, the birthday of the Christ child, the littlest angel proudly brought his gift from its hiding place behind a cloud and humbly placed it before the throne of God. It was only a little box. A small, rough, unlikely box lying among all those other glorious gifts from all the angel paradise. Gifts of such breathless beauty that heaven and all the universe take a reflection of their glory. And when the littlest angel saw this, he knew that his gift to God's child was a shabby gift indeed. He devoutly wished he might reclaim it. It was ugly, it was worthless. If only he could hide it from the sight of God before it was even noticed. 
but it was too late. The hand of God moved over all that bright array of shining gifts, then paused, then dropped, then came to rest on the lowly gift of the littlest angel. And what was his gift to the blessed infant? Well, there was a butterfly with golden wings, captured one bright summer day, and a sky blue egg from a bird's nest in the apple tree that shaded his mother's kitchen door. Yes, and two white stones found on a muddy riverbank, and at the bottom of the box, the limp and tooth-marked leather collar of his faithful mongrel dog. The littlest angel wept hot, bitter tears. For now he knew that instead of honoring the Son of God, he had been most blasphemous. Why had he ever thought that such utterly useless things would be loved by the blessed infant? In frantic terror, he turned to run and hide from the divine wrath of the heavenly Father. But he stumbled and fell, and with a horrified wail and clatter of halo, rolled to the very foot of the heavenly throne. All through the celestial city, there was an ominous and dreadful silence. <laughs> Except for the heartbroken sobbing of the little angel. Then, suddenly, the voice of God rose and swelled through paradise, saying, Of all the gifts of all the angels, I find that this small box pleases me most. Its contents are of the earth and of men. And my son is born to be king of both. I accept this gift in the name of the child Jesus, born of Mary this night in Bethlehem. There was a breathless pause. And then the rough, unsightly box of the littlest angel began to glow with a bright, unearthly light. Then the light became a flame, and the flame became a radiant brilliance. None but the littlest angel saw it rise from its place before the throne of God. And he, and only he, watched it arch the firmament high above the earth to shed its beckoning light over a stable where a child was born. There it shone on that night of miracles and its light was reflected deep in the heart of all mankind. And on the earth, men of goodwill, blinded by its splendor, could never know that the lowly gift of the littlest angel was what they would call forever the shining star of Bethlehem.